Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Hope you're having a great day so far. It is Thursday, July 28th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. We're almost at Friday. We're going to check in with Justin about any possible relief in our future. But for now, let's look at today's night at nine. The principal of Robb Elementary School in Uvalde breaks her silence. Speaking to CNN, she denies safety protocols were routinely ignored at her school. She goes on to say she followed the training that she was provided with to the best of her abilities and will second guess herself for the rest of her life. This is a response to a Texas House Committee investigation that accuses her school of having a culture of noncompliance with keeping doors locked at all times. Russia is said to be considering a proposed prisoner swap with the U.S. that would bring WNBA star Brittany Griner and former Marine Paul Whelan home. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is expected to meet with Russia's foreign minister in the coming days. In exchange for Griner and Whelan, the U.S. would return Victor Boot, an arms dealer nicknamed the Merchant of Death. Today, the Commerce Department will release its much-anticipated report revealing whether America's economy is in a recession. Experts are forecasting the report will show America's gross domestic product in the negative for a second straight quarter. For the second time in a row, the U.S. Federal Reserve boosted a key interest rate by three quarters of a point. It's the most aggressive interest rate move in three decades. The next meeting for the Fed is coming up in September. Filipino President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. arrived in the province of Abra this morning. On Wednesday, a powerful 7.0 earthquake hit the country, leaving several people dead and dozens injured. State media in North Korea reporting Kim Jong-un says his country is ready to mobilize its nuclear war deterrent and counter any U.S. military clash. Kim making the remarks during a speech to mark the 69th anniversary of the Korean War armistice. Kim also criticized South Korea's new president for the first time, warning Seoul was pushing towards the brink of war. Officials with Jacobs Well Natural Area announced that the U.S. Geological Survey shows zero flow at the natural springs. This is only the fourth time since records have been kept that zero flow has been recorded. The situation we described as cause for concern and is the result of ongoing drought and increased levels of groundwater pumping. JetBlue agrees to buy Spirit for $3.8 billion to create the fifth largest U.S. airline. This comes hours after Spirit and Frontier Airlines officially scrapped their plans to merge. Despite Elon Musk moving to terminate his agreement to buy Twitter, the company announced the vote to approve the acquisition will take place September 13th. Twitter filed a lawsuit against the billionaire to force the deal. The shareholder vote is one of the few remaining official steps needed to complete the deal. If it ever happens, we'll be up to the courts. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Outside with live cam, 80 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. And looking back in the rearview mirror to yesterday, 99 never looked so nice, Justin. Yeah, isn't it weird? It was weird. We were below 100 degrees for the first time in a long time. Only 99 yesterday. We had some clouds. A couple of showers showed up on the radar by the afternoon and evening hours. And I think we could see that happen again today. Let's look at the numbers from yesterday. 99 here in San Antonio. We did get up to 100 in Honda 101 in New Braunfels, staying below the triple digit mark in the Hill Country and places like Beeville and Victoria. The forecast for today does call for us to get back up to 100, but there's going to be a few spots that likely stay below that mark with some added cloud cover and maybe, maybe a shower or two. We're seeing a few showers right along the coast today. And I think as we head into the afternoon, like yesterday, you'll see a couple of Showers pop up, especially south and east of town. Weather headlines. Well, uh, again, we are looking for a, a chance of rain today, but a slightly better chance coming up tomorrow. We'll explain why in the tropics, the Pacific has become very active. What about the Atlantic? There is a wave out there and the drought. We're going to check in on the drought monitor and check in on the rivers as well. It's coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. Happening today, there is a military veterans job fair going on. Jonathan Cota joins us live. Jonathan, good morning. Begin, first of all, by telling us where you are. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, right now I'm located at the Shrine Auditorium. It's the place where this hiring event is going to be taking place. Hundreds of exhibitors are going to be here ready to interview and look at those resumes. Veterans are going to be supplying in hopes of landing meaningful employment. But I am going to let Raul talk about the details of this job hiring event. Good morning, Raul. How are you? 
Good morning, fantastic. How are you doing today? Doing well, doing well. Raul, talk to us. This hiring event aimed at hiring veterans. Tell me more about that. Absolutely. So today we're going to be hosting the DAV Recruit Military San Antonio Veterans Job Fair. Uh, and it's open to all members of the military community, including uh, veterans, uh, spouses, transitioning service members, dependents, as well as members of the Guard and the Reserve. Uh, and it's open to that community. Um, and we're here today and we're excited for, uh, for a large turnout of, uh, of job seekers. You know, Raul, you mentioned uh, spouses and dependents. Often uh, they are the ones who are overlooked when we speak of underemployment and unemployment. The focus primarily with veterans and helping them uh, gain employment here. So this is great news. What do spouses need to know, or veterans, or everyone for that matter, as they prepare to come out here this morning? Yeah, so all these companies are here today because they understand the value uh, that the military community uh, brings to the table when it comes to civilian employment. Uh, and that's why they're here today. And they're learning more and more uh, that value that, that the military community brings every day. Now, Raul, this morning, um, exhibitors are still arriving, setting up. This event is set to start at 11 a.m., but this has been happening all week. Am I, am I correct? So we do events across the nation, including uh, national career fairs uh, and then regional career fairs as well. Uh, but this is a one day event. Uh, and depending on the cert market, specifically for San Antonio, we're here uh, multiple times a year. Awesome. If veterans, spouses, dependents can't make it today, what do they need to know or where do they need to go to get more information on future hiring events? Absolutely. So if they can't make it or if they're not in this uh, region or area for today, if they log on to recruitmilitary.com forward slash events, they'll find all the events that we host on that page. Raul, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate the information. Absolutely. Folks, there you have it from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. This hiring event offering a number of opportunities for transitioning service members, veterans, spouses, and dependents, all happening right here at the Shrines Auditorium. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Jonathan. In the morning headline, shots fired during a road rage incident on a highway in Houston and the gun jam saving an elderly man. And Chucky is back and Rice University engineers creating some creepiness. David is also back. You're not creepy like Chucky, though. <laughs> Chucky's creepy. Yeah, he is. Chucky was a, yeah, a lot of folks may not remember Chucky. Davy good, Chucky bad. Chucky bad. Yeah. Chucky creepy. <laughs> Google it if you don't remember Chucky. Real quick before we get to the story. This is a woman with a gun firing shots at a driver trying to get away with a baby in the car. You see the couple in the Houston court now, Benjamin Green and Nosley Ortiz facing a judge yesterday. Ortiz charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Green charged with aggravated assault. The two were involved in a road rage incident on I-45 near 1960. If you're familiar with the Houston area, the Harris County Sheriff says Green got out of his truck and assaulted the guy in the car with his two year old in the back seat. Green's lawyer says the guy in the car tried to retaliate and then nearly hit the female as he drove off. But then as you see in the video, she pulled out a gun, started shooting. The victim was treated for a gunshot wound and is expected to survive. The child not injured. This is incredible. That is a suspect with a gun chasing an 80-year-old man across the street. And then at point blank range, he just tries to shoot him. Fortunately for the suspect, that gun jammed. The suspect took off. This is happening in broad daylight Sunday in Las Vegas. The man got home, parked his car in the garage, and that's when the guy tried to rob him. The suspect held an ice pick to his throat. He wanted his valuables. The man said he's got the valuables in a safe, but the key to the safe was in his gun safe. When he opened the gun safe, the suspect took the weapon you see him trying to use. The man ran across the street. The gun jammed. The suspect took off, and now police in Vegas are asking for help finding the guy. Once again, security video from a house across the street helping out. So imagine you're driving down the street in the neighborhood and you see that guy. What? <laughs> if you are a fan of the late 80s and 90s, those Chucky scary movies, you recognize that guy. Looks just like the little murder and demon doll in the movie. Actually, this is a neighborhood in Alabama. The five year old likes to wear last year's Halloween costume around the neighborhood. If he was trying for a summertime scare, it worked. And of course, the viral went, or the video went viral. Did you see it? Oh my God. Yeah, that would I'm definitely get your attention. So scary. Freak out too. That was just, okay. Yeah. And you go, hey, come get your kid. I'm going to heart attack. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, we got some more creepiness. Speaking of creepy, this is coming to us from Rice University. That's a little creepy, isn't it? The video is Necrobotic Project. All right, now stay with me on this one. Mechanical engineers at Rice take a syringe, fill it with air, then stick it in a dead wolf spider. They are able to reanimate the legs of the spider and then use the legs to the, like a grabber to pick up stuff. Some of the stuff actually weighs more than the spider itself. The spider's legs work like hydraulics. The air pressure extends and contracts their legs. Not only interesting, but could be useful one day, like putting together microelectronics. So there's, some, there's, there's your yeah. creepiness for you. Yeah, it looks creepy. Chucky and the spider. And the, uh. It's hard to top that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll try again tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you. Right now, 908, about 81 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. And Father Hodnes Heights Jazz Festival wraps up tomorrow night and find out how to attend and who is performing as we interview a man synonymous with jazz in San Antonio. Welcome back. Just past 912, smooth jazz fans in San Antonio get another treat tomorrow night. Malcona's Heights Jazz Festival wraps up with a local act opening for a beloved international recording star. David Munoz, host of 101.9 HD2 Smooth Jazz San Antonio, joins us live via Zoom to talk more about it. Hi, David. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you? We are great. Thank you for joining us. Well, well tell us a little bit about the history of the Malcona's Heights Jazz Festival. This is an event that started back in 1994 between the radio station at that point known as KQ 102 and what was known then as Crossroads Mall. We began that and did it a few years and then the city of Balcones Heights stepped up a few years later and decided, hey, we need to go ahead and get involved in this and fund this. So they've been, of course, in charge of uh, funding everything in terms of the talent. I book all the talent for them and here we are 28 years later and going to have a great crowd tomorrow night. Well, David, you're a well-known name here in San Antonio. To recap for folks maybe new to the market, what's your connection to jazz and radio here in San Antonio? Well, I started the uh, Sunday Morning Jazz Show back in 1989, as it was known Sunday Morning Jazz. And then in late 2018, that was pulled and we transitioned to what is now known as Smooth Jazz San Antonio, which can be found in the iHeartRadio app. And also people who have high def radios here in San Antonio can find us at 101.9 HD2. So through the history, I've been able to meet and interview a lot of these great artists, including Peter White, who we're going to see tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. And it's just been a wonderful ride so far. 33 years later, we're still doing it. Very good. And the festival wraps up tomorrow night at Wonderland of the Americas. Tell us who's performing. At uh, 7.30, it's going to be a local crooner, if you will, Johnny P and the Wise Guys. Johnny P does a lot of the old standards, a lot of the great American songbook. He's going to be entertaining fans for the first hour. And then at 9 o'clock, it'll be Peter White, who uh, I met back in 1994. I began playing his music back in 1991. We became good friends through the years. He's been to San Antonio many times, and he has uh, been one of the superstars, if you will, of smooth jazz. And we're going to get a chance to see him tomorrow night for free. That's going to be awesome. I, I'm a Peter White fan. I, I last saw him here in San Antonio, but it's been like 12 years, David, so I'm looking forward to seeing him back here in the Alamo City. You know that part. What do concert goers need to know going into tomorrow night's shows? They can actually put their chairs in place today. In fact, people put their chairs in place literally about a week before the event. If you were to have gone to Wonderland of the Americas on Sunday or Monday, you would have seen a few chairs in place already. The event is free. They can bring lawn chairs and blankets. Coolers and ice chests are not allowed, though, so do come out. If you want to put your chair in place today, find a place and then come back tomorrow night. It'll still be there. This is the honor system, if you will. All right. David Munoz from Smooth Jazz San Antonio and MC of the Balcones Heights Jazz Festival. David, break a leg tomorrow night. It's going to be great to see you back out there. I will see you there, my friend. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you again for the opportunity. Of thank course. You. Have David fun. Munoz, thank you very much, David, for joining us. All right, 915. And I'm hoping that by the time the show starts in the evening, it'll get a little cooler or at least maybe not as much sun. A little bit. Yeah, you know, the evenings have not been so bad mm -hmm. as of late. We've had a breeze, a little bit of cloud cover, and it's still been fairly hot. But, you know, we're trying to look at the positive side of things. It's better than it was, I think, at the beginning of the month. We've got to look at the drop monitor today. This came in and the numbers just keep getting worse. 97% of the state now in drought compared to 95% last week. You know, the irony here is El Paso is one of the lone spots in the state that is not in drought. As they've seen some rain from the monsoonal 
flow coming across parts of New Mexico and Arizona. The places that are typically a lot drier are actually not in drought, but much of the state is, and that includes us here locally, where exceptional drought has really kind of taken over uh, much of our viewing area here, including parts of Bear County. That's the worst uh, that we can get here on our scale. And we know how bad it is. I mean, we've, we're dealing with those brown lawns and everything's kind of uh, really brown at this point. Medina Lake, 11% full. It's down nearly 70 feet. It's down about 14 feet over the last three months. So still in pretty bad shape there. As we look at the uh, radar and satellite, could we get any more rain today? We had a couple showers yesterday. I think there is an opportunity here. You see some showers out in the Gulf of Mexico. Not much here in Texas, not at least yet. But the water vapor imagery shows we have a little bit of a swirl there. This is a weak disturbance working east to west across the area. And what's this go what this is going to do is draw in some deeper moisture. We can see that here with, uh, as we look at the moisture content in the atmosphere. So these orange colors represent deeper moisture. And as it spreads inland, I think today and especially tomorrow, that should provide for a slightly better chance of rain. Still not a great chance, but a slightly better chance, I think, by the uh, afternoon hours. And as we look at the forecast here for today, just a 10% chance, a couple showers popping up here and there, maybe Floresville over to Gonzales. Not much probably here in San Antonio. We get more clouds tomorrow morning. And then by the afternoon, a 20% chance by say three o'clock. And some of these showers, maybe a storm, could make their way towards San Antonio with some of that deeper moisture. That's what we're hoping for. At least it's a little better than what we've seen the last couple days. As we go outside for you, mostly cloudy skies, 80 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 72, feels like 84. Still pretty sticky out there. 76 in Kerrville, 81 Hondo, 82 Pleasanton, 83 right now in Catula. And uh, still in the 70s around Holotus. That'll change here soon. Most of us will be in the 80s within the next hour. Heat index forecast today. I think the heat index probably jumps up to about 103 with that humidity with an uh, air temperature of around 100. It's not too, too bad. And forecast temperatures around the area, mostly uh, right around that triple digit mark. You will find some slightly cooler numbers. Bernie, Fair Oaks Ranch, up to Kerrville and Kenya Lake this afternoon. Let's talk tropics real quick. The Pacific is becoming fairly active. Georgette and Frank, both tropical storms out there. These may strengthen a little bit more before they move into cooler waters. As we look at the Atlantic, though, it is still very quiet. It's been kind of impressively uh, quiet. Uh, just looking at the situation, you would think we would get a little more activity by now. Not there. There is this wave here that is showing some promise, but the Hurricane Center is not flagging this, and it is also very far south. Current track would take it towards more towards South America than it would into the Caribbean, so there's just not much there to worry about or look at, at least at this point. We do think things will ramp up as we get into next month, or at least climatology tells us it will. 100 degrees today, 99 coming up tomorrow with that 20% chance of rain. So we've pushed it just below 100 degrees tomorrow with the added cloud cover and that shot at a few showers. 100 Saturday, 100 Sunday, more very small chances Monday, Tuesday. But it looks like next week it starts to warm back up. We have 102 now on the seven day forecast for Wednesday, guys. Well, we didn't have to go there, did we? <laughs> We didn't have to, but you know, it is August. It's the reality yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Turn the page on a new month. Yep. Justin, thanks. 919, about 81 degrees. And coming up next, a year-round arts program for students across our city that prepares them for a higher education, now accepting new student applications. Details on their programs and how you can apply. And welcome back. It's 923, a tuition free after school program providing students with opportunities to develop artistic skills in preparation for higher education is now accepting new student applications. SACI allows students to express themselves through different programs from film, photography and digital art. Tiffany Huertas has more from SACI with a look at different programs available. Good morning. Any middle and high school student that lives in Bear County can apply to this program and check it out in this studio here. Students focused on film and photography and to talk more about these programs, we have Nicole with SACI. Good morning, Nicole. Talk to us about what do students learn in this studio? So this is the film and photography studio or media arts. Our students are storytellers. They're writing scripts. They're learning everything from beginning to end on how to make small videos, short films. They send them into um, film festivals and things like that with a basis on photography and what makes a good, you know, composition and screenshot. 
What other programs do you all have here? Well, we started as a visual arts program and everything grew out of that. And so this was the second studio that was born. Our students now also explore creative coding, everything um, visual arts through technology for the new media studio. And then our fourth studio here on at CAC is uh, theater. So performing arts and the same thing, writing their stories, creating their characters, and then performing for an audience. What type of impact is this place having on our community? Oh, I would like to thank a really positive one for young people and then also the adults around them. Um, I was a student in CC when I was in high school and it really, it obviously changed my life. Um, but our students might start off thinking that they're going to go into one discipline and then the arts in general blow their mind open and then they also learn how to build community. So by the time students are leaving with, from CC, they are prepared for what's next. They apply to schools, they're getting into art schools in addition to any other um, program they're taking creative arts into biology and science and law so I think um, having leaders out in the world that have creative minds and have an empowered sense of community is just a really amazing thing to have. Who can apply to this program? Middle and high school students all throughout Bear County. Um, we prioritize students who are coming from low economic households or districts uh, where there's you know less arts opportunities um, but students from middle school through uh, junior year in high school can apply. And what is the application process like? Oh, it's really simple. You just go to CAC.org and the application is there. It kind of walks you through exactly what CAC is. And um, after the application, we look at you know the eligibility and you'll interview. So this is a first professional experience for a young artist. They sit down with a teaching artist and kind of show what they've been working on, what they're interested in learning. Um, and then after they're accepted, they start coming after school. Where can people find information about this? Sacy.org, or you can follow us on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. I love coming here. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll have all the details coming up on the Noon Show. Back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. 926, about 81 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. In the next half hour, Camp In with KSAN is officially underway. David and RJ will be joining us with a recap of day one of Cowboys Camp. And could two Americans detained in Russia be released soon? We have the latest in high-stakes prisoner swap talks between Russia and the United States. And as we head to break, a quick check of the roads with TransSky. Looks like things are moving there at I-35 at New Braunfels. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 929. Front and center in the lives of so many transitioning service members and veterans is the massive problem of unemployment and underemployment. Experts say the Bureau of Labor Statistics is falling short in accurately reporting the veteran unemployment rate for a number of reasons. But the issue many vets are facing right now is they're not landing the jobs they're qualified for. Our Jonathan Cotto explains this problem and what some nonprofit organizations are doing to provide a solution. Recent data from the Veterans Metric Initiative shows that a combined underemployment and unemployment rate for transitioning service members and veterans is at a staggering 61%. But what does underemployment actually mean? We mean people working beneath their objective skill set and experience. So they're getting paid less than they should um, for the experience they have and for the education they have. Goldenberg says underemployment is a growing societal problem that is hitting veterans especially hard. We noticed that we were hearing anecdotally from veterans, hey, I got a job, I've got two jobs, but I can't pay the rent because I can't get enough hours. You know, on the one hand, they're employed, but on the other hand, they're not employed in a quality manner such that they can, you know, pay the rent. One of the most requested services from transitioning service members and veterans is employment support. But to make matters worse. But when it comes to employment, I'm learning here that it is the lowest funded of any veteran program area. Why is that? Yeah, that's correct. So if you take the entire U.S. government veteran spend, which is about $300 billion, less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of that spend, less than one-tenth of 1% 1 goes to employment, which is kind of crazy for a lot of reasons. So according to Goldberg, if we can get veterans into high-quality jobs, their need for other high-cost services requiring government funding support goes way down. So it's a force multiplier. If we can, you know, spend a little bit of money, if we doubled it to two tenths of one percent of the federal veterans fund, we would double the amount of support we could give veterans in landing those high quality jobs. Reporting Jonathan Corto, KSAT 12 News. All right, happening today, a job fair aimed at hiring military trained veterans. We know that the event starts at 11 and goes on through three o'clock. 
And our Jonathan Goto joins us live from the Shrine Auditorium where the hiring event is taking place. Hey, good morning. So in today's front and center, we've learned underemployment and underemployment for military veterans is at a staggering 61%. That's right, Stephanie, and good morning, and good morning, Mark. Uh, you know, that's a study that was conducted by the Veterans Initiative Metric Initiative out of Penn State, where they were able to gather just a bunch of data that basically shows veterans aren't landing jobs, and if they are, they're underemployed, meaning they are not working to their acquired experience and skill set. Jonathan, we know you're a U.S. Navy veteran, and in your story, experts describe that underemployment or unemployment as a growing societal problem, hitting veterans especially hard. Is this something you've experienced as all, at all personally? You know, Mark, that's an excellent question, and the honest answer is yes, I've experienced it for a period of time there. Uh, my resume was not translating to recruiters and or hiring managers, and as we know, that's part of the problem here that myself and a lot of veterans have gone through or are going through. So that's something uh, that needs to be addressed and, and is being addressed by organizations like Call of Duty Endowment Program. And speaking of that, Jonathan, what do our viewers need to know if they are a veteran or a transitioning service member looking for a job? Listen, what they need to know is that there are a lot of organizations out there with the word vet or veteran on there, and it can be a daunting prog uh, process to really seek which organization is a right fit. Call of Duty Endowment Program really uh, says it's a one-stop shop for all veterans' needs, specifically catering to uh, writing a resume and uh, if veterans are like me writing that resume and making sure that those words translate to something that recruiters and hiring managers absolutely understand and that's what this event today is so important that's why it's so important so veterans if you're out there you're looking for a job or you feel you're underemployed this event is happening at the shrine auditorium again from 11 a.m to 3 p.m and if you can't make it today there's going to be a number of other events taking place down the road for more information you can just head on over to our website website kset.com. Mark, Stephanie. All right, Shrine Auditorium right up there on 1604 near Blanco Road. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Let's look outside with a live cam, kind of creeping up there to 82 degrees, but hey, I see some clouds still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're still hanging around. We've got some clouds for now, and we're hoping that later this afternoon some of those clouds billow up into some showers, maybe a few downpours. I want to show you the scene across the country. It's still kind of quiet here in Texas, but heavy rain is uh, still an issue for places like uh, Arkansas, Missouri, where they've seen heavy rain over the last several days. Also, some good monsoonal rains across the desert southwest. We are just caught underneath that high where we can't get much in here, although there are some very small chances ahead. Current temperatures across uh, the state, 85 Abilene, 85 Waco, 80 in San Antonio, 85 Corpus Christi. And as uh, we zoom out some of the cooler air is still bottled up north 63 Bismarck 67 in Minneapolis. That's where it feels pretty nice. And as we look at the watches and warnings, some flash flood watches for places out across uh, Arizona, and New Mexico, where those monsoonal rains may cause some flooding today. Otherwise, heat advisors for parts of Texas and also the Pacific Northwest, which has been baking as well. Temperatures they're well into the 90s. Pollen count for today, molds are low, pigweed is low, and the forecast calls for temperatures to be around 90 by noontime, partly cloudy. We will put in a 10% chance of rain this afternoon, up around 100 degrees for a high. It'll feel like 102, 103, with that stray shower potentially popping up south and east of San Antonio. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Trans guide right now, I do want to let you know if you're on northbound 35 headed out of San Antonio, we're seeing big backups due to construction just outside 1604 as you move through Selma towards Schertz. We've got construction uh, just past 3009. Traffic is stacking in those northbound lanes. We are not seeing it on any of these cameras. Yeah, things are moving there at I-10 and the Y for now. Time now, 936 and 82 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Cowboys coming up, uh, rather gearing up for the coming season as training camp kicks off. We'll have a look at what's in store for teams, the team, and fans. Camping with KZ, powered by Davis Law Firm. 
And the first practice at Cowboys camp in the books, the Cowboys hit the field to play a little offense versus defense. All eyes on running back Ezekiel Elliott after back-to-back -back down seasons. David is back with RJ Marquez to discuss. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been doing that all morning. Yeah, we have. We, yeah, we were talking about we this. Share some ideas with you. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Uh, Zeke, David, uh, Zeke, he's is... had a couple of back-to-back -back yeah. years now uh, where he just went over 1,000 yards last season and then the year before did not go over 1,000 yards. So a lot of people looking at his uh, progress. Well, year. last year he was uh, he was hurt. He had the knee injury, but he, he, he sucked it up, as they like to say in pro sports, <laughs> and took the pain and went out there and played and still got 1,000 yards. He's gotten he's got four 1,000-yard mm -hmm. seasons in the last six, I believe. So, so even with all that pain, last, and he was a little nervous. He said going into training camp that, uh, that he was nervous about how his knee is going to react, but... He is like 100% and sounds like he's pretty excited about being there. You know, I was a little, a little worried uh, at the beginning of the offseason. I'm like, dang, you know, this thing still kind of feels a little, a little iffy. But uh, I'll say probably, you know, a month or two into the offseason, a month or two getting back into work. And, uh, and uh, I'll say, you know, probably by the time OTAs hit, um, I, I was back 100. So, David, I think big point here, obviously, Zeke's saying he's back to 100%, but uh, we were talking earlier about Tony Pollard. Tony yep. Pollard's going to be heading into a contract season. Tony Pollard rushed for over 700 yards last year. A lot of fans wanted to see more of Tony Pollard as the season went on, and then we later found out that Zeke was hurt, so that did play a part in it. And that might happen again this year because if you know, even though Zeke is 100%, the fact that the Cowboys have two quality running backs – they may be able to, uh, you know, spell each other a little bit and come yeah. week 17 of the season and, and hopefully a playoff season. Let's, let's hope they're, they're, they're in the postseason. <laughs> then, uh, you know, if, if, Zeke's, if Zeke's still got some, uh, got some legs left, mm -hmm. that's a great thing. So Tony Pollard probably get a little more, uh, little more, little more run this year. Yeah, also some talk of uh, Tony Pollard also uh, maybe moving a little bit to receiver as well to kind of help yeah, right. out there. So let's go ahead and hear from Coach Mike McCarthy on Zeke's recovery and his prospects for this season. Zeke Elliott's one of our rocks on this team. I mean, he's a, he's a keystone player. And so, you know, the communication and his ability to, to do all the extra little stuff, and, and those are the things that I'm obviously I get to look at and be a part of. It means a lot, uh, you know, this team, this organization, uh, and the faith they have in me. And, uh, you know, I, I try to do my best to, you know, be available for them and, and uh, be that rock for them. But he's also a rock for them in receiving. Mr. Tony Pollard, yeah. maybe playing a little receiver. Well, that's one of the keys to Zeke Elliott's success is he can catch the ball. Absolutely, Usually, yeah. he can catch the ball. I mean, last year I think he had a couple of drops, but his knee hurt. So, you know, <laughs> he had a couple hurts, of fumbles. So the, my hands the hurt, before, everything hurt. Fumbles, yeah. So, but <laughs> but he's, he's been known to, to catch some coming out of the yeah. backfield. So yeah. that uh, they're going to need that weapon since they're a little depleted. On the offensive side of the ball, especially at receiver, except for my guy T.J. Basher coming oh from Texas boy. Tech I thought University. You were going to mention Lamb. He's going to blow up this. <laughs> no, C.D. Lamb's already Lamb. there. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm pumping up my guy T.J. Oh man, you're like a full-time like recruiter his, for Tech. He is. Whatever. He's takes, like T.J. Basher's uh, PR guy or something. When you're <laughs> surrounded by Aggies and Longhorns, you have to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like a, a, a must see. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, of course, David, we were talking about practices continuing Practice. there. Micah Parsons Practice. also uh, apparently looked pretty good yesterday. Yeah. I, but he's one guy who I would just put in bubble wrap right now. Just let him get ready for this season. <laughs> he's going to be so important to their defense. Love what I'm well, seeing out of Micah so far. One of the things that they that they worked on in the offseason was some schemes because they know teams are doing the same thing. They're looking at Micah Parsons on the Cowboys when they get ready to play them. Okay, how do we uh, how do we keep this guy from making so many plays? And then the Cowboys are trying to, you know, make sure that he can get in mm -hmm. on those plays. So they've come up with some new schemes. So it's going to be very interesting to see him. Of course, we're going to see him through camp. And we'll hopefully hear from him in, in a couple of days just on the improvement from year one to year two. I mean, he was a stud in his rookie uh, he year. He was. So yeah, you know people are going to be uh, be looking for him when uh, when they play the Cowboys. So he's they, they've come up with some schemes, like mm -hmm. I said. And so they're going to be able to move him around, take more advantage yeah. of, uh, of his a, uh, ability. He's a chess piece, yeah. for sure, so, on that defense. So he's going to be huge. And Leighton Van Der Esch should be back a little bit better. Mm -hmm. If he's not injured, he's, he's pretty good. And they've got some more line. <laughs> yeah. But we'll talk about the if defense. If he's not so, injured, yeah. that's always a big part with uh, Leighton there. <laughs> as, the, as the camp goes on, we'll talk yeah. about their, their defense. All right, David. All right, now you want to talk, talk some Spurs. This. 
I was stunned yesterday <laughs> when, uh, not, well, I, that, I mean, it's not like knock me over stunned, but Larry Ramirez was talking about the preseason schedule. Let's start like Ooh. October 2nd. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's like, now, you know, how many days is that, David? Back in uh, 80 something. 86. 86, 86 to be 86. exact. Yes. Did the math here a little bit earlier. Back um, in my day, they didn't start until <laughs> late October. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Camp is coming. Well, look here. Here's, here's another camp. Look, look who's yeah, there. There's a familiar yeah. face. Yeah. Right? Spurs. He's one guy we recognize. The franchise now. Keldon Johnson just signed That's that it. big eighty million dollar yeah. deal to stay here for the next four seasons. So he was hanging out with the. Uh, How Spurs much is that Adam. autograph worth now? A little bit more, maybe? A little bit pricier. Yeah, I would say so. Was that $80 million yeah. deal he just signed? <laughs> Pretty good. Um, but, David, the other gentleman you're seeing right there is Matt Nielsen. So he's mm -hmm. one of the assistant Ooh. coaches. Okay, here we go. Exactly. See, here we go. <laughs> he's one of the assistant coaches. And you mentioned yesterday on the nine, Chip England, after 17 years, gone. no longer going to be with the And he's Spurs. just going up the road to Oklahoma to say, seriously, yeah. Chip, you couldn't have gone someplace like a, to the east? You're going to have to. <laughs> well, but, you know, it's he, just, was, uh, he was instrumental mm -hmm. in getting Tony Parker. That, remember that mid -range Tony jumper Tony Parker had towards the end of his career that he hardly ever missed. Yep. That's yep. uh, you attribute a lot to that to, to Chip England and the work that those two guys put in mm -hmm. together. That's that's what Chip England meant to the Spurs. I I you know Forgive me, but he even helped Kawhi Leonard. He did. I was going to say, he Kawhi who Leonard. shall not be named <laughs> yeah. number two. Well, that's right. That's your guy. I, I mean, I would say number Kawhi, two. yeah. You could yeah. honestly say a lot of Kawhi success due to what Chip England did with him. And Kawhi yeah. put in the work as well. But Keldon Johnson, also a guy who has benefited. And DeJounte, too. I yeah. mean, the list goes on and on. Guys, so, we got to go. No, wait. Do we? <laughs> yeah, we do. Where are we going? We, we, well, we got to go. Guy. We got we got stuff Aww. to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Kind of like several other Spurs assistant coaches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to task our graphics that. department yeah. coming up with an animation for you guys for this fall for the Spurs. Okay. It's you guys' heads with uh, on Al. It's your faces on Al's heads. You use both of you guys going, who? <laughs> for the Spurs. Okay? Wow. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> 947, <laughs> about 81 that. degrees. Let's go ahead and check with Justin. I could await you guys some time from, from the, the weather cast here because, you know, yeah. you know like one. Yes, but you would have had 30 seconds for weather. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different hot. It's a different, it's a different hot. Yesterday was not as hot. Yeah, we actually, wow. we actually got to use the radar yesterday, so there's that. Yeah. Hey, let me show you some satellite pictures. I think this is pretty incredible. So uh, the National Weather Service out of uh, New Braunfels tweeted this out yesterday. And this is from satellite, obviously, uh, coming out of space. But this is last year. This is what South Texas looked like. And I know it's kind of hard to see the cities there, but that's Fredericksburg. And this is what it looks like as of July 23rd, a year later. You see, it was green last year. Everything was nice and lush. And now look at it this year. Everything is brown as you look at it from space. Uh, pretty incredible to see the difference a year has made here when it comes to this drought. It has been significant and it's happened pretty quick. We mentioned that this is the driest start to a year we've ever seen, at least since records have been kept going back to 1885. We've only picked up 5.12 inches of rain. 1925, uh, we were at 5.44 inches at this point. 1956, 6.29 inches. So you see the, the difference there. And these were all drought years, by the way. So we know that this year is not gonna finish up all that nicely. Hopefully something changes as we get later into the year. We also need to check in on the Guadalupe River not doing great either. Stream flow up around Kerrville is at seven, uh, feet per cu uh, seven cubic feet per second. Stream flow starts to fall off as you get near Spring Branch. We've been talking about how the fact that there's not much, well, there's just no stream flow there. There is a little bit of water still. You get on the other side of Canyon Lake, the stream flow is still okay. It's at 55 cubic feet per second, but not great. And you compare that to a year ago, Look at the difference. It was 172 cubic feet per second a year ago there in New Braunfels, 100 uh, cubic feet per second near uh, Spring Branch. You see Comfort and Kerrville. So a lot has changed within the year. That's, that's kind of my point here. And we uh, reported yes yesterday that Jacob's Well has stopped flowing. The spring there has stopped flowing. So that's just the situation that we're in. We desperately need some rain, and there are some small chances ahead. 80 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 72, feels like 84 right now. Southerly winds at about 11 miles per hour. We have some of those morning clouds working through. You can kind of see the cloud streets there working 
uh, south to north around the area. These will scatter out a little bit as we get into the afternoon, but uh, hopefully some of this cloud cover eventually bubbles up into some showers and storms. 80 degrees in Seguin, 82 right now, New Braunfels, 84 Gonzales and dew points. Well, they're plenty high in the 70s. This is about where we've been each and every day at this time. And so the case at 12 hour forecast, 90 degrees noontime. We're up around 99 by four o'clock, 100 at five o'clock. That'll feel like 102, 103. And then we have that 10% chance of rain that goes through about seven o'clock before we're left with just uh, partly to mostly clear skies this evening. Uh, here's the radar and you can see showers gathering out in the Gulf of Mexico still a distance away from us. But I think we will get some development right along the coast a little bit later this morning. Thanks to a little disturbance here in the atmosphere and then some deeper moisture that's starting to work in from the Gulf of Mexico. So this orange color represents deep moisture across the atmosphere and as it gets a little bit closer to us that gives us a better chance for showers and storms and i think by tomorrow it gets a little deeper so we could get just some of those uh, random pop-ups it's still going to be the weather lottery i mean few of us are going to get any rain but someone hopefully gets something out of this and we can see that here on the uh, forecast just a 10 percent chance of rain today and then tomorrow it does show a few more showers and storms popping up by the afternoon so we're going to bump up the rain chances to 20 percent uh, even here in san antonio uh, and then the weekend it, it dries out so 100 today 99 tomorrow with 20 percent chance of rain 100 both days saturday sunday and then some more small chances Monday and Tuesday. We'll be right back. Traffic alert right now. We have slowdowns all over town, but they're in those normal construction zones. Right now you're looking live at Highway 90 at 36th Street. There's 281 at Stowed Oak Parkway, and we've got some vehicles there that were on the side of the road. This is on what we call the rotator right now, so it's jumping around all over to the cameras that are available. Around the metro area, there's I-10 at Callahan, but one of the bigger slowdowns, again, a reminder, if you have to head out of San Antonio on I-35 North, as you head up towards Schertz right now, we've got construction and the northbound lanes are absolutely jammed up all the way back to Loop 1604. There's some of that construction equipment, I believe, out there at 2D1 northbound at Stone Oak Parkway. But you know what to avoid and how to get around it. Just be careful. Okay, 410 at Marbach. Yeah. Looks like we do have an accident working out there, and I'll try to get a direction on that right now as we check in with Justin, and then I will try to get you some more information, Justin. Ooh, that looks brutal. A lot of, a lot of uh, stopped cars there. Okay, forecast for today. Uh, we're going to get another very small chance of a shower to coming in around the afternoon hours, 10% chance. I think tomorrow there's a little better opportunity. So by, say, uh, 4 or 5 o'clock tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. Don't get your hopes up too much. Not everyone's going to get rain here, and in fact, most of us will not, but at least there's a little better opportunity there. Uh, 99 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain, 100 Saturday, 100 Sunday, and then some small chances Monday and Tuesday, basically around 100 each and every day. All right, thank you, Justin. That accident is northbound 410 at Marbach. And real quick, we want to tell you about this ice cream. Klondike's pulling off the Choco Taco off the market. Mo the move due to melting consumer demand. The announcement has been met with colorful disappointment. Fans created Choco Taco art. Others reminisced. You were the only food I cared about in fourth grade. I don't even uh, remember this. Treat. I don't remember this either. I don't really either. Must be a regional <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> Choco Taco. <laughs>